Welcome to Open Heavens Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God with Salami Energy Harina, your host. We are glad to have you today. Hello, good day and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heavens is written by our Father and the Lord Pastor E.A. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And this commentary is intended to bring insights to God's Word, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Saturday, the 19th day of February 2022, and our topic for today is You Can Move That Mountain, Part 2. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, the one who rules and reigns, the great and mighty one, the one who speaks and mountains tremble, there is none like unto you. We bow in reverence of you. We say be exalted in Jesus' name. Father, we've come before you this day again with grateful hearts for all that you have done for us, for the salvation of our souls, for the life that we have, for the ceaseless and countless testimonies and victories that you give us. You are deserving of our praise. We've come before you, Lord, to hear of you today again. We ask that you speak to us. Let every mountain in our lives be addressed today. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are welcome back. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Mark chapter 11 verse 25. Mark 11 verse 25 reads, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Mark chapter 11 verse 25. And our scripture reading for today is from the same book of Mark chapter 11. We'll be reading from verse 22 to 26 now. Mark chapter 11 verse 22 to 26 reads, And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. We are still considering the topic, You Can Move That Mountain, Part 2. In the body of our devotional today, our Father in the Lord says, Mountains, either physical or spiritual, are stubborn and difficult obstacles to overcome. To move physical mountains, one would require various forms of complex and expensive equipment. To move spiritual mountains, however, Jesus Christ taught us to pray them out of our paths. The primary ingredient required for this kind of prayer is faith. But some other elements have been identified to also act as either hindrances or aids for our prayers to produce the expected results. Two of these critical elements are unforgiveness and forgiveness. Unforgiveness is a major hindrance to mountain-moving prayers, while forgiveness is a powerful aid in moving mountains. It is God's will for us to forgive everyone who may have offended us in one way or another, no matter how hot we may be. Unforgiveness, hence, is disobedience to God And we know that every disobedience to God is a sin. Unforgiveness in itself is a sin and a mountain that also impedes the progress of its host. To command a mountain to move off your path, you must ensure you are not harboring the mountain of unforgiveness in your life. When the burden of sin of unforgiveness has been removed from us, we are able to pray with confidence, lifting holy hands in prayers to God with a clear conscience and faith for answered prayers. This is why Mark chapter 11 verse 24 says, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Moving mountains is one of the most challenging problems of faith in Christendom, because mountains are usually large objects that all eyes can see. Sometimes, as you open your eyes after prayers, you would immediately see that the mountain has refused to move, thereby causing you to doubt. However, the solution is the above verse. When you pray, 
believe that you have received your answer and leave the rest to God. Don't forget that you are not the miracle worker. Your role is to pray with confidence in the Almighty God who has the power to answer prayers. I join my faith with yours today and command every mountain in your path to move in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless his word to us today. Hallelujah. The topic of our devotional one more time is You Can Move That Mountain, Part 2. Praise the Lord. Yesterday we saw the part 1 of our topic, You Can Move That Mountain, Part 1, and we learned some very important lessons there. Our memory verse from the book of Mark chapter 11 verse 23 demonstrates to us that whosoever would say unto a mountain and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, such a person shall have whatsoever he saith. In other words, doubt and unbelief was identified as a root cause for the dominance of mountains in the lives of people. Mountains we learnt in our devotional yesterday was summarily described as whatever has the ultimate assignment to obstruct progress. Signs that characterize the lives of those suffering from the impact of mountains include hardship, time-wasting, stagnancy, barrenness, fruitless efforts, procrastination and failure. The antidote to fear is faith. And we learned yesterday that faith as little as a mustard seed can do wonders. Praise God! Today we have the privilege of studying the part 2 of our topic, which is you can move that mountain part 2. And our Father in the Lord makes us understand that apart from faith, we also have critical elements that make for mountains to move or to remain. Two of these elements we learn are unforgiveness and forgiveness. I remember some days ago we studied about two-sided forgiveness, where our Father in the Lord made us understand that God's principle is such that a man denies himself forgiveness when he refuses to forgive others. And our memory verse for today confirms that. We see in Mark chapter 11 verse 25 that and when ye stand praying, forgive if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Matthew chapter 6 verse 14 and 15 tells us for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, Neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We have been called to a life of forgiving and also receiving forgiveness ourselves. Why is it important to forgive? First of all, just like we learned, unforgiveness can hinder a man from receiving forgiveness himself. It also makes us come boldly with confidence before God. Forgiveness is such a critical issue that in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, our Lord Jesus himself speaking there says, Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there, rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. In other words, unforgiveness can hinder the acceptance of our offerings to God. It is also important because scripture has admonished us that if it be possible, as much as it lieth in us, to live peaceably with all men. Romans chapter 12 verse 18 Romans 13 verse 8 tells us that we should owe no man anything but to love one another. Praise God! Our Father in the Lord also states very importantly in today's devotional that it is God's will for us to forgive everyone who may have offended us in one way or another, no matter how hot we may be. This tells us expressly that there is no excuse for unforgiveness, as this is not a question of how offended we are or if the offender even seems to deserve the forgiveness. For us as believers, forgiveness is a command. So failure to obey is tantamount to disobedience. We must never get tired of forgiving. In Matthew chapter 18 verse 21 and 22, scripture tells us, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Verse 22 says, then Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Hallelujah! A good mathematician would understand that that is 490 times. I am not sure anyone would have the time and patience to keep records until the offenses are complete. Our Lord Jesus' message there is that there should not be limit to our forgiveness. Praise God! We receive the grace today to be forgiven in Jesus' name. Before we go today, 
Our Father in the Lord tells us a cure to doubt. He tells us that when we pray, we must believe that we have received our answer and then we leave the rest to God. How it will happen should not be a reason for headache. Praise God. We'd bow our heads now and pray. We'd say, Father, please completely destroy unforgiveness in my life in Jesus' name. This is such a powerful prayer. Unforgiveness is described as a sin. It is also a mountain on its own. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, completely destroy any stronghold of unforgiveness in my life in the name of Jesus. I receive measures of grace today that makes it easy to forgive. I declare in the name of Jesus that I am easily forgiven. I also receive forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Pray also and ask today for a fresh baptism of the spirit of faith. Faith that dispels every form of fear and doubt in the name of Jesus. Doubt is another limitation to moving mountains. Say, Father, let the root of doubt and fear unbelief be rooted out from my life in the name of Jesus. I manifest faith and I see its tangible results in my life. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Our Father, we give you praise. We thank you. Thank you for relocating every mountain in our lives away. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. We ask today that all that is needed to maintain total victory over mountains in our lives be granted to us. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of Numbers chapter 24 down to chapter 26. Hallelujah. We also want to appreciate you for joining us today again. God bless you. Please join us tomorrow again for another exciting time in God's presence. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80986-11226. Do well to bless someone also by sharing this with them. Go forth and have a victorious day ahead in Jesus' name. See you tomorrow again and bye for now.
I believe you enjoyed today's devotional. We'd love to hear from you. Kindly leave a comment. You can connect with us on any of our social media handles attached. God bless you. Have a great day and see you tomorrow.